It's one of the biggest gangs, one of the biggest Crip gangs. Our generation, you know what I'm saying, was kind of responsible for like, putting it on the map in terms of like. That's the Nipsey hustle many of us know. In the hazy aftermath of the rapper's untimely passing, some haunting questions linger. Was his death a betrayal by those closest to him? What really happened on that fateful day? What led to the downfall of a rising star beloved by millions? Beyond the headlines and tributes lies a complex narrative of loyalty, ambition, and the harsh realities of street life. While the world mourned a visionary artist, whispers of betrayal echo through the corridors of speculation. And here's the thing. Those speculations are not just whispers. People have come out to talk about them. Were you enjoying the 60s when you, when you were young, or was it just all your family members was in it, so you were in it? Nah, really, me, none of my family members was from rolling 60s. My dad came from Africa. Phew, the tea is hot, my people. Join us on a gripping journey as we unravel the enigma surrounding Nipsey's demise, delving deep into the shadows where truth intersects with myth. What really happened on that fateful day? Was it a mere act of senseless violence or a calculated betrayal orchestrated from within? In this exclusive expose, we peel back the layers of deception and delve into the heart of the matter. Through candid interviews, expert analysis, and unearthed evidence, we confront the uncomfortable truths that lie beneath the surface. Brace yourself for a revelation that challenges everything you thought you knew about Nipsey Hussle's legacy. Prepare to be captivated, shocked, and enlightened as we navigate the murky waters of betrayal and honor in the world of the rolling 60s. This is the untold story they don't want you to hear. Before he was Nipsey, Hermias Asgadom grew up the son of an immigrant in a family that couldn't even afford back-to-school clothes. He didn't see many options to support himself or his family, and around the age of 14, he joined the Rollin' Sixties. In an interview with a source, he talked about how being in the gang changed his life. I adapted to the culture. Naturally, that's not who I am, he said. As kids, we come from nurturing, but there's a lack of that in the coldness you get from going outside. The world said we were wrong, but the set embraced you for who you were. And that's the allure of gang banging. Being in the set gave him a brotherhood, afforded him protection. He wore his pride in his colors and his Slauson boy tattoos, which also made him a mark for police surveillance. In the early 2000s, the LAPD was still cracking down hard on gang violence. Growing up in Crenshaw, Hustle witnessed the struggles and hardships faced by many of its residents. Poverty, violence, and lack of opportunities were rampant in the neighborhood. Instead of succumbing to these challenges, if you check the stats, the M rates in the years I was a teenager and the incarceration rates in LA, in my section of the Crenshaw district, of the Rollin 60s when I was 14, 15, none of my peers survived. None of my peers avoided prison. None of M, he said. He was raised by his mother, Angelica Smith, an African-American woman, and Dawit Askadom, an Eritrean war refugee who came to the United States after fleeing the Eritrean War of Independence. He also was raised alongside his brother Samuel, a.k.a. Black Sam, and his sister Samantha. After spending his entire life in South Central, Nipsey traveled to his father's homeland, Eritrea, with his dad and his brother. Over a visit that lasted a few months, he saw a whole country of people who looked like him living autonomously, taking pride in their country. It lit a fire under him to build a community like that back at home. I was 19 when I came back, so I was still knee-deep in what was going on in L.A., he said. But something in him had changed. You know, you got those two voices. This one became a lot louder because I couldn't fake like I wasn't exposed to the way things could be. And you know, I think it led to me making decisions that brought me into music. The music he made showed you the world he knew, with shout-outs to OGs and local stomping grounds. He was honest about experiences in his hood. I wasn't always banging, but I speak about it openly, he rapped in 2013. No shame in my game. I did my thing on the coldest streets. 
His music won fans among peers and critics. He had kind of the laid-back stoner cool of a Snoop, but had more of the mission and ethos of a Tupac, a fan says. Nipsey followed his own entrepreneurial drive to sell what made him unique in rap. He created a recording label called All Money In, and in 2013 got attention from the whole music industry for his creative approach to marketing when he sold out all 1,000 copies in less than 24 hours, effectively making $100,000. Jay-Z bought 100 copies himself. Like so many of us are way more than what we look like, says songwriter James Fauntleroy, who worked with Nipsey throughout his career and appears on Crenshaw. Every now and then you find somebody that, in a good way, is so out of character that they're a more interesting character in the play of life. I say there's weather changers and weather reporters, says Lawrence Dobson, Fauntleroy's collaborator and one of Nipsey's longtime producers. Nipsey and a few of us, we're weather changers. In 2018, he finally dropped an official debut album, Victory Lap, which debuted at number four on the Billboard 200 and went on to be nominated for a Best Rap Album Grammy. Despite his affiliation with the Rollins 60s, Nipsey Hussle was not just another gang member. He was a visionary who aimed to bring positive change to his community. He believed in using his influence and resources to uplift those around him. Hussle decided to be part of the solution. All the while, he was working on other ventures. In 2017, he and his brother, Black Sam, opened an L.A. storefront to sell their merchandise and spread their ethos. They called it the Marathon Clothing Store, and it wasn't on Fairfax or Melrose, far removed from the streets that gave Nipsey his grind. It was right in the heart of the hood that made him. The store was part of his focus on black ownership and entrepreneurial strategy to buy back the block. He understood the importance of economic empowerment and sought to create opportunities for people in Crenshaw. He opened a clothing store and a barber shop, providing jobs and resources to local residents. At Marathon, Nipsey hired parolees to sweep up or even work the register. He wanted to give people opportunities he never had as a kid, opportunities that have never really existed for people in Crenshaw. He was known to donate clothing to people in the neighborhood who needed it, especially OGs coming home after doing time. Despite his efforts to make a positive impact, Hustle's involvement with the Rollins 60s often overshadowed his accomplishments. The gang affiliation brought both criticism and controversy to his name. However, Hustle remained steadfast in his commitment to his community, believing that his actions would speak louder than words. That commitment to his hood led Nipsey to do something unexpected. He wrote a letter to the LAPD. It read, in part, Our goal is to work with the department to help improve communication, relationships, and work towards changing the culture and dialogue between LAPD and the inner city. We want to hear about your new programs and your goals for the department, as well as how we can help stop gang violence and help you and help the kids. In Crenshaw, Cops were the opposition, and people who talked to cops were even worse. Snitches. Being a snitch meant you were a threat in the hood. Finally, though, Soberoff and Rock Nation managed to schedule a meeting between Nipsey and Moore for the afternoon of Monday, April 1st, 2019. But that meeting never happened. On Sunday, March 31st, 2019, Nipsey was in the parking lot outside Marathon Clothing. Hustle was shot 11 times in the head and body during a fatal attack just a day before he was scheduled to meet with L.A. cops in a bid to stop gang violence. After Nipsey Hustle was K.E.D., many people started talking about why it happened. Some folks thought Eugene Big U Henley, who was in the Rolling 60s gang and Hustle former manager, might have something to do with it. So who is Big U, Big U, also known as Eugene Henley? is the definition of the big homie in the hood, someone you not only want in your corner, but someone you need in your corner. When artists come to Los Angeles and need some security, Big U is who they are calling. Hailing from South Central Los Angeles, Big U can be viewed as the voice of the streets, pushing black men to be great and achieve their fullest potential. You simply can't have a conversation about the game changers of the genre without including Big U. 
He played a major role in Nipsey Hussle's career. Big U helped Nipsey cultivate his all-money-in brand beyond just the city. He helped the rapper reach the masses on a global scale. After Nipsey Hussle died, people started talking a lot about why it happened. Some folks thought that Eugene Big U Henley, who was in the same gang as Hustle, might have something to do with it. Henley was part of the Rolling Sixties gang, which was the same gang Hustler was linked to. This idea caused a lot of controversy and got people thinking. They wondered if there was a conflict within the gang or if something else was going on. Some people even suggested that maybe Henley wanted Hustle out of the way for some reason. This reason can be seen way back in 2011, when the LAPD who were investigating an officer involved shooting that took place at Crenshaw and Slauson in South Los Angeles. The LAPD had been responding to a fight between Los Angeles-based rapper Ermius Nipsey Hussle, Asgadam, and his former manager Eugene Big U Henley. The two were once close business partners when the rapper signed with Cinematic Epic Records in 2007. Plans to release his first studio album, South Central State of Mind, were to follow after his three mixtapes from the series Bullets Ain't Got No Name were an instant hit on the underground, but that album was never released. This evening, the two men got into a physical altercation near the alley at the rear of the Shell gas station at Crenshaw and Slauson in Hyde Park. According to eyewitnesses, Nipsey's brother, Samuel Asgadam, pulled out a gun to defend his brother and fired into the air to end the conflict. That's when an LAPD officer arrived on the scene and fired at the brother, missing him. Recalling what happened in 2011, some people came up with theories that Nipsey, former manager, would have been responsible for hustle death. At that time, no one knew for sure what really happened that day, but not until the police finished their investigation. During McKinney's opening statement, he alleged that Holder and his girlfriend pull it into a bussy parking lot at the time to get food from a burger restaurant. That's when Holder allegedly spotted Hustle, McKinney said. Apparently, the conversation had something to do with Hustle telling Mr. Holder that word on the street was that Mr. Holder was snitching, McKinney said in his statement. The conversation wasn't particularly intense. It wasn't particularly belligerent. McKinney went on to explain that Holder was heard asking Hustle, so you've never snitched? Or haven't you snitched? Holder then got back into his car, and he and the woman drove off. As she was driving, Holder allegedly pulled out a gun and told the woman to drive around the block so that he could load the weapon, the DA told the grand jury. He then allegedly told her to pull over and said he'd be right back. It was at that moment that McKinney said Holder allegedly approached Hustle outside of his store and shot him multiple times before kicking the rapper in the head and fleeing. Los Angeles Police Commissioner Steve Soboroff said he and the police chief were set to meet with Hustle and Jay-Z's Rock Nation to talk about ways he could help stop gang violence and help us help kids. I'm so very sad, Soboroff tweeted. On April 2, 2019, Holder was arrested by the Los Angeles Police Department and was being held in solitary confinement. On May 9th, a grand jury indicted Holder on one count of M, two counts each of attempted M and assault with a firearm, and one count of possession of a firearm by a felon. Holder's attorneys argued that he did not intend to K-hustle, but had acted in the heat of the moment. McKinney argued, he thought about it and he did it. That's all premeditated means. It doesn't mean he planned it for weeks. Testimony at the trial established that, immediately before Holder shot Hustle, the two men argued over a rumor that Holder had cooperated with law enforcement in an unrelated matter. On July 6, 2022, Holder was found guilty of first-degree M and two counts of attempted voluntary manslaughter relating to injuries he caused to bystanders. On February 22, 2023, Superior Court Judge H. Clay Jack sentenced Holder to 60 years in prison. Following the tragic death of Nipsey Hussle, people from all walks of life came together to mourn and pay tribute to the rapper, entrepreneur, and activist. Fans, fellow artists, and community members worldwide shared their sorrow and memories, expressing the profound impact Hustle had on their lives. 
Many praised Hustle for his contributions to music, noting his unique style and powerful lyrics that resonated with listeners. His entrepreneurial spirit also drew admiration, as he worked tirelessly to create opportunities for himself and others in his community. Additionally, Hustle's dedication to activism and social change earned him respect, as he used his platform to address issues such as gun violence, poverty, and systemic inequality. However, alongside the outpouring of grief and tributes, there was also a sense of anger and frustration. Many expressed outrage at the senseless violence that took Hustle's life, highlighting the need for change within communities plagued by crime and violence. Some called for justice, demanding accountability for those responsible for Hustle's death. Despite the controversies and challenges surrounding his passing, Hustle's legacy endures as a source of inspiration and hope. His commitment to empowering underserved communities lives on through the various initiatives and projects he spearheaded during his lifetime. From providing job opportunities to investing in local businesses, Hustle's impact continues to be felt long after his passing. Nipsey Hussle's death sparked a profound community response with an outpouring of grief, tributes, and calls for change. While his passing was a tragic loss, his legacy serves as a reminder of the importance of using one's platform for positive change and inspiring others to make a difference in their communities. Betrayed by Rolling Sixties sheds light on the hidden complexities surrounding Nipsey Hussle's untimely demise. Through meticulous examination and courageous exploration, we've peeled back the layers of mystery and revealed a narrative far more intricate than initially perceived. As the world continues to grapple with the loss of a cultural icon, this exposure challenges us to question preconceived notions and confront uncomfortable truths. Let us remember Nipsey Hussle not only for his music but also for the legacy he leaves behind, a legacy that inspires us to seek justice, transparency, and unity in the face of adversity.